Warning, this podcast, website, and associated social media accounts are intended for audiences of legal drinking age. We do not advocate overconsumption or the abuse of alcohol. Never drink and drive, drink responsibly. And please remember to always take what we say with a grain of salt. After all, we are just some dudes with some brews. <laughs> We started out by crawling out from under the thumb of the man. The lovers of God with dad bod just trying to feed our fam. Go sit right there and grab a bear. You know just what to do. Throw it back, get hammered, and listen to dudes and brews. All right, dude. So I saw something today on Instagram that made me kind of sad. Oh. I wanted to show it to you, so uh, 903 posted something today, and they had to dump a barrel. A barrel of beer? Yeah. They had to dump an uh, entire barrel. If it's a barrel-aged beer, that is sad. It's one of the birthday Sasquatch barrel-aged beers. Mm. Uh, according to their post, um, something went wrong, and I... I'm saying, let me try it still. But it yeah, says no, here it says, I'm looking at him like, hey, man, I don't know. I might drink some of that. Well, it says here, it says, the bad news that we noticed this week, something just wasn't right with the barrel-aged birthday Sasquatch, and it did not meet our standards. I understand that. I get it. It's not what you want to be a barrel-aged Sasquatch. But it says, we, we determined the off flavor is some excelitide or whatever the hell this word is, uh, which gives the beer a tart flavor re- reminiscent of green apples. Part of me goes, bro, you should have bottled some of that. I wanted to try it. Yeah, or give it away for free. Yeah, give it away <laughs> as like a sell it. What you do sell is you barrel. call it like a you call it like a bad batch or something. Like you have a series of bad batches. Yeah, uh, I mean, if it's birthday Sasquatch, you can call it the Hangover, and, <laughs> and it looks like he's like throwing up, like he's green in the face. Yeah, it's green apples. Yeah, I don't know. They yeah. just eat. I, I drink it. Whatever it was, it didn't taste right. So maybe it really was as bad as it. Yeah, bad, and he's just making it sound better than it really was. Yeah, when they say acelidihyd, that could be poison. We don't, know, we don't even know <laughs> what that be. is, so we're talking about drinking it. It may be, but they still have two other barrels that are good, so they, I guess they, had, they did three barrels. One of them yeah. went bad, the other two were fine. I've never went to one of the birthday parties like they have every year. Have you? No. I mean, usually I usually, usually drink it. Oh yeah, they, but they always have a bunch of varieties of, of Sasquatch. Oh, I on tap. I wanted to go one year. They did. I think it was the maybe the fifth anniversary or something. Mm-hmm. Whatever it was, they did it really big. They did it over at the school, and it was a huge yeah. deal. They had like forty or fifty beers on tap. Yeah, and they because they did a bunch of small small. Uh, pardon me. They did a bunch of like small batches. Yeah, I think that's the first time that they did a pickle beer. Uh, oh, was wow. doing that, and I'm like, I really wanted to go, but I ended up having plans or something that weekend yeah. or whatnot. I mean. I'm just, they always do them during the day, and I'm just, I have, I can't drink, especially a stout at noon. I'll be passed out. I'll be, just, my whole day's over. It just makes you want to go to sleep? I'll or? get nappy. Get all sleepy sleep. So do you not get real sleepy whenever you just eat like a big lunch? <laughs> like you go like pig out on a big lunch, it doesn't make you tired? Uh, Yeah, but I can recover a little bit from that. But beer, uh, if, I don't recover good from beer. Like, really? No, nah, I need to go sleep. Oh man, well just, just don't. Sleeping. Well, I, I guess at a Sasquatch birthday, you got to drink a stout. I was gonna say, just don't drink a stout. Drink something a little yeah, bit lighter. I, just, I'm, I don't know what it is. I can't day drink. Can't I, at all. <laughs> I know you. You've said this before. I've gotten. I, can't. I wouldn't say used to it because that makes it sound like I'm a drunk. But like, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. like, I've gotten used to day drinking. <laughs> well, well, no, because like when I watch football, I like to have a beer when I watch football, and usually yeah. that's either at noon or it's at three. So having like two or three beers at noon, like right around noon time. I've, I mean, I've, I'm usually mm. pretty fine, but I don't drink stouts though. Every time I go to a restaurant and I see people drinking like at lunchtime, yeah, I'm like, ah, oh, what are you doing? It hurts <laughs> my head just thinking about it. Really? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm just know. grateful I live in Texas because that means I will. If I do drink for a football game, at least it's not before noon. Because if I drink before noon, I really feel like an alcoholic. I mean, yeah. I've only done that like once in my life, and I felt really terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- think, I think it was when I turned 21, I had a beer before I turned, but before noon, and I felt gross. There was just something about it that just, I, d- I don't enjoy it. Personally, it just makes me feel weird, but it is what it is. So, um, today, wanted to, we're, we're going we're gonna to celebrate something. So, speaking of Sasquatch's birthday, 
we're going to continue on with the celebration. So this year, 2021, is 25th anniversary of Ballast Point. Um, so I'm assuming that you're familiar with oh, Ballast yeah. Point. California, this is like... I can't say the most famous West Coast brewery, but the one that's most famous to me. Uh, I've known them for, and maybe they just produce a lot of beer because there's a lot of Ballast Point that makes it over here. Maybe it is that. Um, I know that... Um, San Diego, right? Yep, they're out of San Diego, and I want to say Stone is out of California too, are they not? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. And also, I really have always appreciated Ballast Point's artwork, so maybe that's why I paid extra attention to them. Possibly. Possibly. Is this not going to let me into their website? Dude, come on. It's a, You're too young. <laughs> 1900, maybe that's the problem. No, like it doesn't let me... Mm. What are you trying to pull up from them? I'm just going to pull up their website so we can show it off and say, good job to Ballast Point, but this, their website's lame. Let's do this. Um... There's so because many users so, wanting to go celebrate their birthday, they crashed the site. So, uh, no, one of the things that I was going to point out is that they actually did change the artwork this year for their twenty for their twenty fifth anniversary. So that's what I was wanting to check out. Oh yeah, see, I'm on. It says complete art, art inside the can, art outside the can. It's crazy. As soon as you pull up their site, their comment is about their artwork. Yeah, hold on a second. But yeah, that uh, okay, that sculpt and IPA. Here we go. It let me in this time. Okay, so uh, we're gonna look at something here though, because there I saw this a minute ago, or when I was on here earlier. Um, man, you're looking at the mobile version of their website though, the, dude. It's cool. It's got this little video I'm watching. Yeah, it's, uh, we're. <laughs> I can't. I find it on their app. Okay, so their desktop website sucks. Yeah, this is their cool. mobile website's awesome because I was looking at it on my phone earlier and it was great. Yeah, dude, where it's showing that little montage about the art, and it's so funny because I preach the same message every week. Remember, yeah. I'm always like, the art really tells the story of the beer. Okay, hold hold on here. All right, all right, all right. I'm getting excited here. You are. Oh, I even like how they made the text uh, look like a, a glass of beer, a beer glass. Nice. Attention to detail. This is the worst website of all time. <laughs> it's a flop. Dude, I'm telling... Oh, let's go to our artwork. Let's see what this brings up, the information. I like... Uh, it it's always has like a sea adventure or like a pirate theme or... I like the skeletons that they'll put on there sometimes. Yeah. Oh, geez. This is some pretty... Okay, this is a cool place to look at some, some, some of the artwork here. It looks like it's all done by this guy, Paul Elder. Yeah, not to be mistaken with Paul Felder from the UFC. <laughs> uh, but those look like, like uh, what do they call them? Concept art? That looks like concept art and then turned into a painting. It is, see? It has the concept art and then the painting version of oh, it. Oh, yes. I see what you're saying. And then uh, it, that looks really cool. Dude, these are pretty legit. Yeah, this dude's nice. Oh, that's the one I was talking about, that, that skeleton right above. Oh, right here? Yeah, that was one of my favorite ones. It's called like uh, Stranded at Sea or something like that. I don't that. know if I've ever had it. I haven't really had a lot of their beers, to be honest. Because they're expensive. Well, you, you're you not afraid of spending some money on beers. No, I'm so. not, but that, that is something Victory that... At sea. But that is something that has turned me off. Sour Winch. It has. The price. I I know. It It's it's better when they just don't put a price on there, and I just buy it. When yeah. there's a price, it makes me leery about buying the more expensive Yeah, theirs ones. are like $13, $14 a six-pack. Yeah. Like always. It's not... Dude, the red velvet. I like this picture. Dude, all of these, you don't get these around here. You can get that Fathom. I've had that one. Yeah, I've seen this one. I didn't realize it was an IPA. A lot of them are IPAs. Ooh, apricot and honey. It's a golden ale. That looks good. Yep. It's like funny. It's stuck in that barrel. Yeah, I love yeah. it. It is telling a story. Yeah, so let's see. Uh, there was that video. I wonder if you can find it on there. I don't even see it on here. Oh, well. But I did bring some ballast points so we could cheers to them and say, All right. Good job to these guys. So you want to pull one of those out while I continue to be upset about their website? <laughs> great foot. Great foot. <laughs> great fruit sculpin. Their sculpin, I think, is. Uh, one of their most famous IPAs. I mean, but this is a great. The only thing I'd ever seen before was their was their sculpin. Yep. 
It was the first one that they showed on the website. Yeah. But I've never had this grapefruit version, so cheers. Freaking broke my thumbnail on a pistachio earlier. So. <laughs> what? No Going joke. ham on pistachios, Look, bro. It cracked it right in half. Jeez. I know. So it's like sometimes I'm, you just I'm gotta injured. let that nut go, bro. Well, <laughs> sometimes it's too late. Oh man. Uh, yeah. So this website is the worst. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, let's just yep. open one of these views. <laughs> All right, so there's not any kind of explanation on it, but it is an Indian Pale Ale with natural grapefruit flavors. Ballast Point, dedicated to the craft. All right. See, it's not as dark. It doesn't give that amber color. Not quite as ambery as I was expecting, but it's still... It's got that sour grapefruit taste, though. It does. Like it, it doesn't taste like they put grapefruit flavoring in there. It tastes like they squeezed straight up grapefruit in there. Mm, let's see. See what I mean? It is very grapefruit forward. Yeah. And you know, honestly, I'm usually not a big fan of grapefruit. Mm. Like, I think the first grapefruit beer I ever had was i think they call it the ruby redbird yep from shiner yeah that's what i was gonna say and it's it just turned me off mm. and then i like, liked it uh like last year sometime i was like going on this health kick trying to find something to eat for breakfast and i heard people eat grapefruit for breakfast so i'm like cool let's buy some grapefruit i try it out and i'm like i don't know about this and then i heard some people say that they like to put sugar on grapefruit which totally defeats the purpose of it being healthy but you put sugar on <laughs> grapefruit it's pretty good but i wonder if it's just because i like sugar but yeah sugar's not i mean sugar can be healthy in moderation so if you don't have an issue where you're eating sugary stuff all the time yeah sugar on grapefruit is healthy maybe you know it, mean? Is. it turns it into a nice good treat right but if you're looking for a diet yeah sugar on grapefruit does defeat the purpose yeah i don't know but uh i i like it honestly i'm surprised that i do it's not what i was expecting um, I don't know why when it says grapefruit right on there, it does hit you pretty hard with, with the grapefruit flavors. And it throws me off as far as to what they used for the hops on this one. So I don't even know what to even try to guess. Yeah, and it's proprietary, so they're not going to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't put anything on the can. Other than their beautiful artwork from, what was his name, Paul? Paul Elder. Paul Elder. <laughs> so funny his name's paul elder why just because paul felder it's so close <laughs> shout oh, out man they do a pineapple version of this i just saw it man that sounds mm. good look that's the old label right there of the grapefruit sculpin they do a pineapple remember i was trying to remember what the old label looked like oh this right here yeah oh it won't even show me i mean you can see it in the bottle right there but this one's got that nice pink color yeah so here's the old one there's the old one What's that pizza from? There's a new one. Wait, go back to that pizza. What, what? what do you think it's from? It looks like a gas station pizza. Uh, it says Wyatt on it. I don't know. This is. It's like a great. I'm mystery. just assuming they're from California. I don't know, like California <laughs> Pizza Kitchen. I'm just gonna search Wyatt Pizza. Yeah, look that up. No, uh, the guy's name's Wyatt. It's like I'm trying to solve some. No, look, it even tells you right, right here in the corner. It even tells you the guy's name's. Oh, Wyatt. they wrote his name on the pizza. Like, like on, on the, the tag, that looks like the, like the, the, I don't know. This is Wyatt's pizza. Yeah. Come on, dude. You're That's taking so too much into pizza. You look too well, it, deep into stuff sometimes. It, right? Yeah, I know, right? I'm like solving mysteries. Okay. It's so, not like it's a Starbucks drink where they put your, your name on the, on the thing. You right. don't see that with pizza normally. I don't know. But anyways. I will say that uh, the label, a lot better than it was. Because if you look at the can on here. Yeah, that's not hitting. That's not hitting. That's garbage in comparison. That's, yeah, let's just say it. That's garbage. <laughs> so yeah, good good job in upgrading, guys. I pre I appreciate it. But it's crazy. They've been around since. Uh, I guess it would have been ninety three, right? And that if I do the math right, what what's their anniversary? Twenty five years. Yep. 
I don't know why I asked. Like I was going to do the math in my head or something. Like am I doing the math right there? Uh, 93 plus 25. So I would do 25 minus 7. Hey, we're doing math here. Why are we mathematicians? <laughs> I don't, I don't think it's 93. Oh, I think 96. it's 91. Oh, it's 96. 96. I can't do math. <laughs> Man, I'm so bad at... Uh, they're odd numbers. You know what I mean? I guess so. I yeah, I can't do odd numbers like that. Uh, so 96, and yeah, you, you're, you're right. It is uh, San Diego. Yeah. So. But Shout out to them. San Diego, worst traffic I've ever been in. Oh, yeah, but you've actually beautiful. been. Were, did, were you able to uh, go to the brewery by no. chance? No, I went to San Diego just for a Chargers game. Uh, so I drove from Orange County, like Anaheim, to San Diego. And then saw the Chargers and then drove back. There's no time to do anything else. That trip alone, it's almost like a trip from here to Dallas, but Wait, imagine it taking all where'd, day. Where'd you, where'd you stay? I uh, stayed at Buddy's house. His parents are in Anaheim. Orange oh, in County. Anaheim. So you went Anaheim to San, uh, Diego. San Diego. And what was the drive time? I don't remember, dude. It was all day. Like, especially on the way back, I just remember it was so many hours that I was like delirious. I just wanted to get home. Delirious like Eddie Murphy. Yeah, I don't remember how many hours it was, though. I remember we listened to a lot of talk radio, and it was just... I think like, it was did they do a lot of, of talk radio? No, I think it was just Howard Stern listening to. Like my buddy's dad that we were riding with just listening oh, to Howard Stern. Oh, he likes Stern. Howard Stern? Yeah, so... Okay. Okay, so, <laughs> all right. I was finally able to get this pulled up. Let's watch this video real quick, and then we'll get into her rating this beer. Okay? All right. Art brings to life the story of every beer. Art inside the can and outside the can. Passing haze. It's complete art. Nice. If that video doesn't make you want to ball this point, I don't know what will. I think it's great. That was great. So, yeah, I art. think every brewery needs to have an artist that does their artwork. You know what's funny is I was thinking about that on the way over here because I I agree. Yeah. I 100% agree. They need to have somebody, even if it's somebody that does uh, like digital art, mm -hmm. even if it's somebody that does that, they need to have somebody with an artistic flair involved. Uh -huh. And it needs to have a general theme that they keep going. Yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be the same characters or anything, but just even if the artwork style is the same, it needs to be a general similar theme that follows through all of them. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Looks like we're going to have to find somebody that can do some artwork so we can get our labels done right. Yep. At, for the well, place. so, you know, back whenever I, I wrote that, uh, when I was in college and I wrote a thing for a brewery, a business plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I had a specific artist in mind because I had a whole idea and it's this tattoo artist named Stephen Compton. Okay. And uh, I don't want to say anything about the beer. The, any of the I don't want to give it away because I want someone to steal my idea. <laughs> so I can't say any more. But, but, but it's but funny that had I had that in mind. mind. I was already thinking I found an artist because the whole idea, my whole, the whole brewery was based off of a off of his style of tattoos. I oh, loved okay. his style of tattoos, and I'm like, oh, this would be cool if it was. This is the theme of beers. Okay. So yeah. Like, okay. I don't want to say any more because someone's going to go look him up and then they're going to be like, oh, I'm going to go steal this beer idea. <laughs> so, Hire so. him to do some art. Okay. And it, well, most people probably don't think into stuff like I, would, like I do. Right. So, no, they're not. But, all right, man. So, uh, scale of one to five, what do what, what, what you got on this one? <sighs> man, this one's good. Um, it's good. To me, it's not one of my favorites. It is a little bit, it does punch me in the face pretty hard. So, it, that brings it down a little bit for me. Um, I prefer something a little bit more fruity, more tropical. Yeah. Um, personally, so for me, it is, yeah, it's fruity, but I think I'm gonna give it like a a a three, solid three. Yeah, I wanted it's to, got I that tart said taste. Two point seven five, but I thought I was being rude by saying two. Yeah, it's their birthday. <laughs> so I had to say three. It's their birthday, so <laughs> right. I'm 25 years, I'm dude. with you. 25 years, uh, I'm going to go with a three as well. Yeah, they deserve it. Good job on the beer. Yeah. I think that I like the regular Sculpin better without the uh, grapefruit. The grapefruit. Dude, I don't know what go the ahead. deal is. This is the only ballast point that they had. Yeah. I was expecting to be able to choose from two or three different flavors, and they only had the one. And I'm like, dude, you guys suck. Step <laughs> up your game. That's why we need to open a craft beer store here in Sherman. Well, yeah. 
I've been saying that for years. But but you know what's funny when when, when I say that is I was talking to a guy at a uh, uh what's what's that liquor store by the house uh F- Fossil Creek yeah okay I went in there I bought the 903 triple IPA okay the guys the guy was like oh is this is, have you have you tried this yet blah 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 and I'm like. Uh, yeah, you know, it's pretty good. And he's like, yeah, you know, I haven't really s- sold a whole bunch of the, 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 this one. I sell a lot of the, their, their, their Bach and they, uh, they said another beer, I, their pickle beer maybe. And I go, okay, obviously it's a business. Mm-hmm. So they don't care what comes through, through their store unless it sells. Right. When I'm thinking, oh, this place needs more stuff because I want it. But just because I want it, does that mean other people want it? <laughs> Yeah, right. So so would a craft beer store actually do good? Or is there a reason know. why they only have one one Ballast Point beer in their store because yeah. it doesn't sell? It's hard to say, man. Sherman businesses they a lot of businesses aren't successful here, like small businesses like that. Like ju- ju- just in general. Yeah, like just in general, smaller businesses crap. just they open and then they close after several years. And I think because there's a few big hitter big box liquor stores that have a variety of beer. I think that it meets the needs of the general public. However, I'm not saying that there's not a niche and there's not a group of people like your target audience is like us. We like good craft beer. Oh, 100%. We want to go to a, we want variety. Yes. I just don't know what that market is here in Sherman. Right. Cause I don't want to drink the same thing over and over and over yeah. again. But the thing is, there's a reason why those stores get the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. Because it's what sells. That's the reason why breweries brew the same thing over and over again because it's what sells. Yep. And it's that's why I'm that's why I say we're blessed to be in a city that has a brewery that has nine oh three. Yeah. Because I feel like we do drink a lot of nine oh three on the show. Yeah. But it's because they put out a lot of beers. And it's because they're good. There's so many breweries around here, but I love nine oh three's beer. You're and you're and you're not wrong. But if we were in a different city and there was a different brewery and they were putting out brewery exclusives all the time, we would be drinking their beer instead. Yeah, this is exclusives for sure. Yeah, and there are certain things that yeah. 903 puts out that they don't sell everywhere. Yeah, but I'm not like I'm not part of their club where you get be part of the club and buy those expensive, I think like, we need to do limited that. ones. Uh, those are the ones that are the true local. I feel like in general, I buy the ones that they ship around. You know what I mean? Even that triple, like I like it, but it's still one that they sell at stores. Yeah, but they sell it locally. I don't think they ship that one out. I know some of them, they, they I mean, a lot of them, they do now. But yeah. uh, if they do that bottle club again, we, we, we need to hop on that train. I think they still do it. Do they not? I don't, I haven't seen it advertised. Yeah, so maybe they don't do the bottle club, but they still have like where you can pre-order any of their fancy beers. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I they just released the some ones. of them. Yeah, yeah. Even that one that just got drained. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're gonna <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna Look go at fast. Us just, just shake our heads. I know those barrel aged ones, man. I love barrel aged beers, but I just uh, too cheap. I know. I need to talk to somebody about how to do that and like what, like what it does, and I just need to talk to somebody. The about science it. behind it. Yes. Yeah. That's why I need to get an actual brewery, like yeah. a, like an actual brewmaster in here so I can ask a lot of questions. It seems like a lot of it has to do with just uh, aging it. Like it, it, it's already brewed. It's like a double fermentation or second fermentation. No, but so this is the thing. It's what I'm imagining. And so this is what I understand. Now, I'm a novice when it comes to brewing beer. I've done it yeah. a handful of times. I enjoy the process. I enjoy the camaraderie. I'm not an expert by any means. I've done, and I am currently doing a secondary fermentation all the forums i've read says a secondary fermentation is not for additional fermenting no it's for flavor it's for flavor exactly and we wait we did a peach one early on and where the second fermentation was with all the peaches did you add pe- peaches me to and it you then? did it remember okay. well I, I didn't remember so if we ended up doing it if we end up doing a secondary or not oh like, yeah yeah we had that, all those frozen peaches it was legit I, I remember putting those in there i just didn't remember if it was secondary fermentation mm-hmm. that that we ended up doing that because like that that last beer that that we did that stout uh-huh. did a secondary fermentation with the spices yeah i got one right now that's doing a secondary fermentation it's gonna be ready to bottle not this saturday but next saturday so that's and, what i feel like it's just you're doing it in a whiskey barrel or a barrel that has flavored liquor then in it. why is it that barrel aged beers are typically way higher in alcohol content. 
Well, because they're still fermenting for a long time, like a year. So it's almost like wine. I don't. I mean, I don't know the science behind it, but I think just the longer that it has to yeah. ferment, like, it's not like you're just putting it in a barrel for like a couple of weeks, like you are extra. Yeah, you're sitting it there for an entire year. Oh, for sure. And that has to like add the alcohol content. I mean, it. I can imagine it does. Yeah. Uh, I just it 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 makes me wonder because from what I understand is that the yeast eats the sugars mm-hmm. from your grains and turns it into alcohol. Well, if it's eating all the sugars then there's no alcohol, so it can't really ferment any further. Maybe it does, and I'm just not familiar with it. I, I have no idea. How does wine? You know what I mean? You get a good wine that's been aging for like 20 years, 30 years. Yeah, something like that. I don't get it. I, I don't know. What makes it great? I don't know. This is the bro science here. See, but yeah, what I Yeah, I know. This is where we just start just now, guessing. Now, from what I understand when it comes to wine, I'm not a wine drinker, but from what I understand, the year that they put on that wine is the year that the grapes were harvested, not the year that it was bottled. Really? That's what I understand. Do you? What? Do you, do you, so you fact harv- check me. So you, fact check me. Well, that. I'm just confused. So you harvest grapes in the '60s, but then you just now bottled it like 40 years later, um, 60 years later. I don't know the difference in time frame. Um, let's see this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look it up. Um, I heard that somewhere. Yeah, see, the year on the wine bottle refers to the year in which the grapes were harvested, i.e. year of vintage or the vintage year. Okay, but then you think it would be synonymous because... You would think that they would harvest the grapes one day, the next day they would just brew the beer? Sometime around that time, you would think. You know, actually, it makes me think of this. So, like, let's just say today I brew a beer and it's a a stout, okay? We go, we, we get all the ingredients, we make it today. Yeah. But we actually don't bottle it for like five years. They would put today's date on it rather than the day that they actually bottle it. So it sits in the wine barrels and like ferments there you for go. however many yep. years. That makes sense. So the year, the, the year they actually harvested and made, put yeah. it into the barrel. And okay. Then it's not, so I think we're saying the same thing. They may not then. bottle it yeah, until yeah. way later. It's just kind of like a, we're thinking about it in terms of beer and not wine. Right. Because harvesting is basically when you brewed the beer. Yeah, and and when yeah. and when we think about it, they usually will put like this is the, the twenty twenty barrel aged beer. Yeah. Uh when really it was made in twenty seventeen, but that's not when they released it, so they don't put that date on it for beer. Which they should. You think? You think they don't put the whenever they first put it in the barrel? I mean, I'm sure that they have that logged somewhere, but they don't like when they do release dates or they do like this is the mm. the 2021 version yeah. of it. I think that that that's what they do. Beer. I'm not. I'm huh. not 100 sure. I, I mean, know. I'm just guessing. This is that bro science portion of the yeah, show. Yeah, I know that most of the, which is most of the show. <laughs> <laughs> I was just guessing things. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> and then googling it. <laughs> Here's an interesting thing: how does how long does beer last? Styles such as pale ales, light lagers, wheat beer, beers, and brown ales I can't even speak are best within 120 days of packaging. Whereas darker, heavier beers like stouts and porters are good for up to 180 days from packaging. Oh, that's interesting. See, and and I'm a f- a part of a lot of forums or Facebook groups. Uh huh. And I've seen people be like, oh, I've had this. In, I forgot this was in the back of my closet. I've had it in the closet for eight years. You think it's still any good? Really? Ugh. Like some of the beers that they, that they, one of them that I saw somebody talk about and like a bunch of people were posting about it was the 120 minute IPA from uh, Dogfish Head. Yeah. Which I've heard is, even when it's first package is pretty ridiculous. I've never bought it because. Talk about getting punched in the jaw by a hop. Yes. <laughs> Them hop hands. <laughs> and double haymaker the, hops. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but man, I figured we, we could get into a game here. We're going to go a little old school and we're going to do Can You Get Behind That? All right, let's okay? do it. Let's do it. I saw something today that made me really think about this and maybe put myself back as a kid. Okay. So, a Game Boy. Oh, yeah. Can You Get Behind That? That thick, thick. <laughs> now, the thing is, <laughs> that thick. which Game Boy did you have? Uh, I never had any of them. I wish I had a Game Boy, but I never had one. Because uh, when I was a kid, man, Game Boys were expensive. Oh, yeah, cause and, they, uh, because they were new. Yeah, and the original one was that thick brick, dude. That <laughs> thick brick. I don't even <laughs> want you to say it. <laughs> it was a brick. 
I could definitely get behind a Game Boy. The Game Boy Color put it on another level. See that original gray thick hitter right there. So you, know. but you liked this Game Boy. The color? The Game Boy Color was on another level because it was colored. It was thin. It had color. Uh huh. And then that Game Boy Advance was super cool. My brother had one of those because those were like my brother's like five years younger than me. So yeah. You know, when he was old enough to to get it a Game Boy, that's what he got, and that's like something reasonable to have. And I actually used to play RPGs on that, which was pretty fun. It's a really? fun little okay. thing to play. I think it was called Harvest Time or Harvest something. It was a it was a Japanese RPG like role playing, okay, turn based game. But yeah, I can get behind it, dude. So I think we, if you get it, you have to play that that Tetris that put the Game Boy on map, bro. I'll I'll tell you this. So the game, it looks like it came out in April of '89. You're right. So I was three uh, years old. I wasn't born until until '91, so it's before my time. I owned one Game Boy. It was this exact model, and I owned it when I was in high school. So for some reason, when I was riding the bus in high school, like my freshman sophomore year, yeah, a bunch of us on the bus got into. We were like, I guess we were tired of listening to music on our disc man. We decided to go ahead and get Game Boys. Uh huh. So we went to pawn shops and we bought Game Boys, and we would just trade games and play games all the time. And uh, a buddy of mine brought on, and if you've never seen one of these, they I think it's the coolest thing ever. It just takes way 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 too many double A's. The Sega Game Gear. Oh yeah, that one was cool. That one was on another thing level. Thing was massive. You're talking about a big thing. That it thing was, was because it was basically a Sega Genesis. It was not like the Game Boy wasn't like the handheld version of the Nintendo. It was a dumbed down system. Yeah, for sure. The Sega uh, Game Gear was the Sega Genesis, full fledged Sonic the Hedgehog. Look how that thick. That, that thing, thing was massive. That thing would eat through your double A's. Dude, I think it took like eight or ten double A's. Goodness. Yeah, I, th- I think it was eight, so four on each side. Yeah, that thing made uh, <laughs> Energizer stocks go through the roof <laughs> <laughs> when that thing took off. Yeah, dude, I had a friend who had one of those, and I'd played it at their house. Uh, it was fun, but to me, if you're gonna play like a handheld console or game, it's cool to play like Pokemon or something where you can trade with other people with them. So, like Game Boy Color, I think really was the best one. Well, like the thing is, is like I was always envious of people that had sega stuff because as a kid i remember having like when i was younger i remember having the the original nintendo so the nes yeah and i was great i enjoyed it i played games on it i had no problem with it but i was just envious of kids that had a sega because i didn't yeah it's it's like that thing where it's always like you want what you don't have yeah and, same i uh, never had a sega i have a sega now as an adult but i yeah. never had one as a kid so when he brought on that that Sega, I was so excited to play uh, Sonic the Hedgehog because I yeah. mean that's exclusive to Sega. <laughs> so yeah. it was it was it, it was cool, but uh, so fast paced too, man. That's like on another level for kids. Dude, uh, <laughs> the, the music. Dun, 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 yes, dun, love dun, dun, it. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> it is insane. Boing. Whenever, yeah. whenever you hit somebody, all your coin or your uh, rings go everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Chaos. Pure chaos. Yeah. So uh, Game Boy, I can totally get, get behind it. Now, uh, another thing I did when I was in high school, man, I'm just a bad influence on people sometimes because I remember being, they came out with the Nintendo DS. Okay. That, yep. That's the, the, the one. The first DS. Yes. It was, you flip the it up, it was dual, dual screen. screen. The bottom screen was touch screen. Yep. And what was cool is that you could play with other people that were near you. You uh-huh. could connect. Some games, I only had to have the game. You just connect to me. And we, I remember sitting in class, th- would open up a book in front of me, sit there with the Nintendo DS, and I'd play my buddies in – we'd play two games. We'd play um, Mario Kart. Okay. Awesome. And then we'd play uh, Metroid Prime. Nice. Me- Metroid Prime each other in the middle of class. Yes. Well, we're supposed to be reading book. <laughs> <laughs> Got that textbook hitter hiding it. That reminds me, dude, whenever I was in high school and I was I went to the Voc Tech, it's like vocational technology oh, yeah. center. Um I was in the this class and I was in video editing, but I was with these other people who did like uh web page design and stuff. We were all high schoolers though. Uh we would play Quake on the computers. Oh, okay. And then, because the teacher would just let us work in there, and we'd just be playing Quake like no other. And then she'd come in, we'd have to get off the screen real quick, and do do, you know, like like we're doing nothing. Nope. But we, but, uh, I, n- I never played Quake. I, g- I think it was a little bit before my time. Mm, we did awesome. uh, after 
the DS got because you know how everything's a fad. You yeah. know, the DS went away. We stopped playing it, and we ended up. A buddy of mine downloaded uh, Unreal Tournament three. Yeah, on on the piece on one of the computers, put it in some network drive folder in a bunch of hidden folders that only like a few of us knew where it was. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it took a while for IT to figure out where that one was because we thought we thought we were cool by hiding folders and putting them in like the most random spots. Yeah, but yeah, we'd only do it on breaks. And then the computer lab, uh, the computer teacher was a coach, so he didn't really care. Yeah. Like the webmaster's teacher was an actual like guy that knew what he was doing, but the most of the classes were were ran by a coach, so he didn't care if we played games. Nah, he's up there thinking about his star wrestler. <laughs> 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 we're going to state this year. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we, we we did the exact same thing. Yeah, yeah. Playing Unreal Tournament. It's, it's very similar. And I'm trying to think I mean, I'm they, assuming it's a first-person made, shooter, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they're very and they're the same idea of uh arena style uh Deathmatch, yeah, just, 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 death just, just like a free for all. And and I think that honestly, they're made by the same company, Unreal Tournament. Unreal Tournament was epic, and I know that they uh, Quake was. I don't remember Quake though, dude. It has a cult following still today. They have a. Uh, oh, it was by Epic Games, man. You got that on on lock, dude. I, this was my jam. I used to love playing this Quake though. I don't remember if it was Epic ID. Quake was like the same people who made Doom. But Quake was the one who... Oh, dude, Wait, where do you that, see ID? Am I blind? Oh, uh, I see it in the very bottom left corner. I just remember. <laughs> oh, dang. But <laughs> like, I oh. just it just brought back my memory. But that rail gun right there, that second picture is the rail gun. That oh, was the right very here? first time you ever see a rail gun, and it's still in video games today. What yeah. do, what does a rail gun do? It like just it like charges up and sends like one big laser oh, like yeah. zzz, psh, and then it's like you either hit somebody and kill them or you miss. Yep, I remember playing it that. Takes skills to use them. I remember uh using that in like like uh, Halo. Yep, Halo's got a version of it. Uh mm-hmm. I don't remember what they call it, but This little guy here reminds me of Duke Nukem. <laughs> uh Duke Nukem was the same Doom company, I think, right? Was ID? it was yeah. ID maybe? But Quake's the one who put it on the map, dude, because it started out like this, and then uh, it started out just like Doom, where you're running around, and then they started doing online. Started doing the the, the multiplayer. online multiplayer, and hmm. then that just took off, man. Everybody's getting down on it. That Dang. was got me into video games right there. It's first person shooters. Quake. Now I suck. Now I try to play Call of Duty. I mean, I could play Halo pretty good. Uh, but games that are like Twitch shooters, where it's just like whoever looks at somebody and shoots first wins. Those You're Call not. of Duty men, oh, those kids are just ridiculously good. I don't understand how they do it. Well, like I don't, uh, I haven't played online Call of Duty in years. Me mm-hmm. and the kids will play sometimes, but just against bots. Kids yeah. aren't. I'm not gonna let them play online. They're one foul mouth tw- twelve year old's gonna piss me off. Yeah, and I don't want them talking about kids like that. And two. They're just not going to have any fun because they're going to lose. Yeah, right. Like, I don't have fun on it because I'm like, dude, Call of Duty sucks. Everybody's too good. Yeah. Like, Seriously, the second that somebody sees me, I'm dead. Like, Halo, it's like there's a little bit more strategy to it. You got a shield. You have different weapons. Any weapon's good, but you have to know how to use it. You can get out of the way. You know, there's a little bit of strategy. So t- two things. One, uh, I want to say about Call of Duty, one of the reasons why I stopped playing was because guys got too good. They started doing these things called, they were like 360 headshots yeah. with a sniper rifle. I know. No scope. You yeah, don't pull up a scope. You just jump, turn, and you shoot someone in the head. I'm like, it makes no sense to me. Uh, so I stopped playing. And then uh, yeah, no Halo, you, you said that any gun's good. Yeah. I will say the best gun is the battle rifle. No, yeah, you you got to play. So the battle rifle rifle is good against like a pistol. It's a it's a better version of the pistol, but it's way better than it's better than the assault rifle. Yeah, it's better than the assault rifle. But those are the basic guns. I like to play. What's it called? There's a game mode that I play all. The only time I play, I play it. It's like party. It's a party game where every time you die, you spawn new guns, two new guns. Oh, okay. That's cool. And then every gun, there's like variations of it, three variations of yeah. it. So you play with all the power weapons. Oh, that's cool. And you really get to see the legit guns. Oh, okay. There's tons of them. That battle rifle is low on the rankings. Well, cause like that... But they throw it in a regular match. Like the battle rifle is in most regular matches. Oh, 100%. So, yeah, yeah. It's a good gun to pick up. So uh, I guess I just don't play Halo enough. I need to play it again. Uh, when, when the kids play... Call of Duty, we like playing a mode called Gun Game. 
mm-hmm. where basically every time the so you start out with a pistol and then every kill you get you get a new gun so you yeah, kill somebody yeah. you get a new gun and then at the end i think you have like a throwing knife to 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 win the match yeah i and remember i played and, that and at your house once with your kids yeah yeah. So a lot of, so like that's cool because you get to experience all the guns. So I yeah. like I like this idea, this party, whatever you're calling it. Yeah, I, I, it, I need to try that out. It's a uh, it, it's what I like to play because it's really chaotic too. Because every you don't know what anybody's has, you don't right. know what kind of weapons anybody has, and you get swords and I mean there's just all sorts of it's just chaotic. And I yeah. think it even says that chaos at its finest. Oh really? Oh yeah, man, yeah, is the subtitle. I will say the sword, the plasma sword, the most overpowered weapon in anything. It is, but it's so beautiful with the right weapon. If you have the the hammer, the hammer's slow. Oh, yeah. So you can't, the sword is good if you know how to use it. Right. The way you use it is you just run full speed the opposite direction of where your team is. Because everybody's going after your teammates. You just want to rip through hallways. You want to stay in narrow spaces. You don't want to be out in the open. And you just want to move super fast and never stop running, and then just slay and ching, ching, yeah, don't even just care. Keep if you running, hit. keep moving. Just get hit and just keep running. You just keep those running. Yeah, you slide through. You kill somebody. Keep moving. Uh, if you get if you're running with your team, you're gonna get shot, blown up because you can die Ooh, just right. like anything, any weapon. Right. You know, somebody shoots a grenade at you or a rocket at you, you're dead. So. Yeah. Which yeah. I when I was a kid, we played. Uh, this is back when the internet really wasn't a thing. People didn't play online. I'd go over to a buddy's house and we'd play two v two, and we do yeah. uh, we do uh, land. We just connect connect, connect it with Ethernet, but between the two Xboxes, mm-hmm. and we would play ro- uh, rockets. Rockets. I think it was rocket snipers only. Uh, Maybe they do rockets rocket. and shotties. Yeah, that that yeah, yeah. that's what it that's is. That's a game mode. Yeah, yeah, and we do. That's the only game mode that 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 we'd ever play. And yeah. As powerful as rocket launchers are, you have to know how to use them correctly. Yeah, because they're slow. You got to shoot at their. You feet. get one, and then you can you can dodge them and run. Also, they're slow to reload. Where a shotgun, you just slide in. Dude, sh- shotgun, it's shoot and melee. Yeah, dead yeah. immediately. The shotgun and if, takes away. And if you get close their, enough with yeah. the shotgun, then it's just shotgun them one shot. I don't. I, I think the shotgun takes away the shield, and then the melee actually kills them. Well, if you seriously, in the, at least in the new one, if you're touching them with the shotgun, like I'm literally. Oh, touching it has to be team, like a po- point die. blank range. Yeah, so okay. you could slide into them and then, and then they'll, uh, die. they'll okay. die in one shot. Otherwise, yeah, you can melee them. Yeah. No, yeah. I always because you could do it real quick where you do like whatever. I guess B's melee maybe. Uh, I haven't played in so long. Yeah. So it's like you shoot and hit B, like you just back, back to back, and he just shoots and does that, uh-huh. and then they're dead. It's called the two piece, man. Yeah, you get that yeah. two piece hitter, and then go about your business. It's a two man. piece. <laughs> All right, man. So, uh, so it looks like we we both agree we can get behind yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the Game Boy. <laughs> we we always go on a tangent here. What about the viewfinder? Can you get behind um, a viewfinder? I don't know what that is. Or it's the view master. Oh. I'm so sorry. I'm saying it wrong. The view master. The old school view master, dude. Do you you remember these hitters right here? Oh yeah. I don't remember any specific like images I had to look through. But Dang, I never had a little case with all this. Everybody's stuff. seen one of these in a thrown around in a toy box somewhere. <laughs> it's what's funny is you always see them with none of these little cards though. The cards always end up getting missing. They get lost, they <laughs> yeah. get destroyed somehow. Yep. But the ones that I always saw were like Disney, like little clips of films, like little stills mm, from a film. Yep. It was always something cool. I mean, this I mean, this looks even cooler, though, this right here with this little frog. You can like some little nature hitters. Oh, yeah, endangered species. Like, see, that sounds cool. I've never had anything like that. Yeah, I just don't know if kids can dig these nowadays. Oh, well, no. Nowadays, this is lame. Yeah. And you can't tell me that there's not like boys out there that have had their eyes poked out with these. <laughs> you know what I mean? Little little turds, little little punk kids. You're looking at it, and somebody else comes and hits the backside of it. Ah! It's Two called, black eyes. It's called giving somebody the raccoons. <laughs> Get it's called giving here. them that raccoon. Oh dang! I never even thought about that, man. All right, dude. I say, are you ready for the next beer? So you got to ask me. Can can you get behind a yeah, viewmaster yeah. though? All right, so I'll wait to reveal the beer. Joe Gregory, can you get behind the viewmaster, dude? Um, and in its time, yeah, yeah, it it was cool. Nowadays, not at all. 
nowadays if you had one i'd be playing with it right now really yeah like if i went to your house and i saw one on the floor i'd be like oh what's this and i clicked through every image <laughs> click, click <through> all <laughs> yeah, i would see, see all of up. and then I, i'd be done with it but i'd still do it yeah so there's no replay value unless you have a bunch of those cards yeah but you wouldn't if i had one you wouldn't just be like let me check this out yeah i'd check it out and then i would never touch it again <laughs> so it, it, it so this is a collector's item yeah, that's exactly what what it is. It's it sits on your shelf, and maybe it has the little card with your favorite movie as a kid. So you yeah. can see stills from that movie. It's just something to collect nowadays. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, you're all, ready to get to uh, get this beer. So what do you got here for all us? Right. I know you brought something special, didn't you? It's uh, so it's from Sierra Nevada. So I can't say it's like super special. Okay, but I like Sierra Nevada. I think did, – don't they make – I don't know if they still do, but don't they make a Hefeweizen? I've never had their Hefeweizen, but I have – they have the pale ale. They're famous for their pale ale. Oh, okay, yeah. The green can. But when you look at this thing, the Wonderland Nectarine L. So I got this because I'm like, okay, this looks like a little juicy beer. Not too bad, but it's 7.5 APV. Okay. Which seems high for like a fruit beer. And then you, and then I read the back. Okay, go go ahead. Set out and see where the adventure leads. Roam until the paradise, your paradise appears like this juicy golden sunset of a brew. Take it all in with an aroma of just picked fruit, bold hop flavors, and a bright burst of nectarine. Enjoy the ride. And I'm like, that sounds fun. So you know what's weird is I'm trying to think of what a nectarine is. <laughs> You don't know what a nectarine is? And I, I've, I mean, I've definitely had them, but I'm trying to like picture it in my mind. It's kind of like a peach, but with a, uh, what is it called in the middle? A pit? A pit. It's like a peach with a pit. I mean, isn't that what a peach has? Does peaches have pits? Yeah. So this remind. See, I was thinking like an apricot. It's it's just like an apricot, but it's softer. An apricot has kind of a firm, a firmness to it. Yeah. And apricot also has a smooth outside where this one's a little fuzzy. Uh, okay. So before you drink this, I'm gonna I'm not even gonna smell it yet. I've been told that if it's, you want to get peach flavor out of a beer, you use apricots. If this has got a similar flavor to an apricot, I'm assuming when we drink it, we're actually gonna we're actually gonna taste more of a peachy flavor. Okay. Well, now that you said that, let's see if that's true. I've just I mean I'd have to actually eat the fruit side by side, but I've just heard that they use apricots because it brings off a stronger flavor than like a, like a peach does. So it smells like a freaking like nectarine the though, dude. Like specifically nectarine versus peach. Yeah. Or are you just saying that because no, you it says? smell it. That doesn't smell like a peach. That smells like a nectarine. I mean, you get like reminiscence of peach, but it does taste, it does smell a little bit different. Mm, I love it. I'm going to go buy some. Nectarines. Well, no, I mean, I, if you wouldn't have told me it was nectarine, I would have been like, it smells like a weird peach. Because it's got like that same kind of, what, 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 what kind of fruit is this? It's not a peach or a, because it's not a melon. It's not like a Look gourd. Look at the higher classification, peach. Oh, so it's a type of peach then. Okay. I guess so. I would have never thought that. But if you want me to give you the scientific name, it's a prunus parescas var... Nusi Parsica. So, you know, just didn't know if you wanted me to pull that one out of my hat or not. I mean, I appreciate that, man. I like all that Latin you're, you're, you're spitting. So I'll say I really like this one. I mean, call, call me weird. I like a fruit beer. I do. I don't know that I've ever had a bad fruit beer, and that's what this is probably labeled as. And I'm looking forward to that spring weather, man. This is like bringing spring fast. Oh, are you already ready for it, man? I'm ready. Or did this just like send you into a whole nother land? Oh no, dude, I'm ready already. I'm ready already. Ready um, already. I'm, I'm any tired of the cold? Hadn't even been that cold. It's not that I'm tired of the cold, but I'm just looking forward to like green. Look, oh, have you yeah. seen the front of my house, dude? It's full of <laughs> bird poop right now. Oh no! There's a little tree across the street produces these berries, and the these birds flock in. And, and what's weird is like it's not like spring's gonna make this go away. Uh, but the birds flock in and eat these berries, and they crap all over my yard and my and the truck. Yeah. So, it, at least if it was spring, it would look beautiful and green. Everything looks dead and pooped out in my front yard right now. Well, I mean, I think that I mean birds go south for for the winter, so maybe there's less birds during the springtime. I, I don't know. I feel like they're coming out of the woodwork right now. Yeah. So spring's bringing them out, but 
there's no spring greens or anything. I want to see the trees bloom. I want no, to see I the just grass. figured that once it starts to warm up, it'll warm up up north as well. So they'll start going back up north. Oh, I see what you're saying. So they're, like they're down here. here because yeah, it's yeah. not as cold yet. <laughs> yep. It's not cold as cold as it is up there. You're probably onto something there, dude. I mean, I just heard. I mean, I don't know, but I've heard that. Birds fly south for the winter. No, I've heard that. That's something we hear our whole life. If that's not true, I don't know what is. If that's not true, then I don't believe in Santa no more. <laughs> get out of here. Um, Check out that bottle opener. Third picture. Sweet. It's a mermaid. It's a little merman. A little merwoman. Yeah. Mermaid. Mermaid. It's a maid. Yep. Okay. I mean, because like, like, like if it's a male version, it's called a merman. That's what they say. So mermaid. I don't know. Okay. What's the opposite of a maid? Like, what's the male version of a maid? I think of like a butler. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't think I don't think maid refers to the profession. I think it's well, no, <laughs> not at all. It's like it's, it's like maiden. It, it's short maiden, name okay. for maiden. Right? So, what's the male version of a maiden? Yeah, yeah. Look, look that up. <laughs> male know. version of a maiden. Uh, let, let's see. <laughs> Do you not like my <laughs> No, because I feel like we need to rebrand merman because people call it that, but I think it's a little lazy. Look, male version of Karen's. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Chad. It's a bachelor. A maiden is a young woman or girl who isn't married. Okay. I Maybe I should have just figured out the definition of a maiden first. So a, mer- a mermaid and then a mer-bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> mer- merman. <laughs> no wonder. Anyway. It's like uh, Zoolander. Merman, dad. <laughs> Merman, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I haven't seen that movie. In, I've seen I've seen the mo- movie once, and I I couldn't tell you. I mean, I know what it's about, but I couldn't quote oh, anything from it. Dude, he goes and visits his dad at the coal mining, and uh, he goes to work with his dad because he's like putting male modeling behind him. Oh, uh, okay. And then the, he's hanging after the a long shift in the and the coal mine. All the men go to the bar and they're drinking beer and kind of doing man things, right? <laughs> And he shows up there already, you know, dressed in a turtleneck and stuff, like pissing his dad off. Oh no! And uh, th- this commercial comes on the t- on the TV, and it's Zoolander yeah. dressed as a mermaid. He's like, <laughs> "Water is the essence of life, <laughs> and life is the essence, or or something is something is the essence of life." And then he looks at the camera, and then he just swims off real fast, and his dad just snaps. He's like, "Damn it!" Zoolander, <laughs> and then like goes off on him saying around here we're like a mermaid. And he's like merman, dad, and like that's his defense is he's like dead serious saying merman. Really, uh, it's funny. like he's about to cry. It's dude, that movie's great. You need that's to watch funny. It. I'll have to watch it again. And it sounds like you have some other stuff with movies. Coming yes, up. yes. Okay, but before we get into it here, you need to uh, we we got to rate this one here. Okay, first things first. You get in order of operations here. Yes. So, what does this dude have around this beer? I don't know, dude. Look, the beer glass in the back has it, too. What the hell is it's it? Like, I don't know. What is that? I don't know. These beer glasses have, like, wristbands. I know. It's like whatever brewery that they're at. Also, like, what's going on with this dude earning badges? Can you can earn? We can earn badges on here? Oh, dude. I can show you later. We have so many Tons badges. Of them, huh? Yeah, you get badges for... The different kinds of beer that you drink and how many that you drink and the different yeah I'll have to I'll have okay. to show them to cool, you cool. I, we've got hundreds of them. We need to get like some vests. <laughs> put in, with get, like <laughs> uh, it makes you think of like uh, Cub Scouts where yes. you have like a little sash yes. with, with all your merit badges. We need our badges, bro. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get some, or we can be like punk rockers with a, a jean jacket with all of our Ooh, patches. with all the patches. Boom. I like that one better. Yes. Yeah, let's do that yes. with that Levi's jean jacket. <laughs> Cut off the sleeves. Make room for the patches, though. <laughs> I mean, I think I'd leave the sleeves on just so we have more room. You're right. You're right. <laughs> and you and you do black jean, right? Uh, I mean, I, I've I, never I, wore I never a jean one, jacket, so. so yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like either one, I'd, because one thing is these jean jackets always seem short. You oh, yeah. That? Yeah. So I don't know if I would really dig it, but if I had a bunch of patches on it, I'd rock it. <laughs> patches or buttons? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But any, anyway, <laughs> so uh, this one here is good. I think it's super drinkable. I think I'm yeah. Bow's Point. I love you guys and happy 25th. Congratulations to you guys. You've outlasted a lot of different breweries out there, but the Sculpin wasn't as drinkable. I couldn't drink as many of these. It, it punches me in the face too hard. Yeah, I agree. I think, well, 
also it was an IPA, so that was working against it too. Whereas this uh, Nectarine Ale, it, it's got just a real subtle taste. So definitely think that if we're going to battle of the fruits tonight, the Nectarine won. Yeah. Birthday right. boy, sorry, we enjoyed your website and that cool <laughs> video that you had. Also, congrats on your birthday. No, no, no. We hated their website, but we liked the video. You hated the website. I pulled it up on my iPad in like five seconds and was actually enjoying it over It's here. because it's, <laughs> the mobile version of the website's awesome. The actual desktop version, terrible. <laughs> I forgot there was something I was going to look for. I've already forgot. <laughs> We're going to rate the beer, right? Yeah. Oh, I know what I was going to look for. Like how old Sierra and Nevada's been around? Because uh, I think they've been around for a while, too. Let's take a look here. Her age. Yeah. Um, in 1980. Yeah, they've been around for evs, dude. In they, 1980, Ken Grossman built a small brewery in the city of Chico, California. Ooh, another Californian. To this day, premier ingredients and time-honored brewing techniques make Sierra Nevada ales and lagers truly exceptional beers. Okay, so hold on. They just said ales and lagers. Does that mean that they don't make stouts? I've never seen a stout from them. Maybe no, they don't. I've never seen one. Dang. But, you know, earlier I was asking about this. Uh, I did look it up. This is the... F- so, like, when I first got into craft beer, I was drinking a lot of Hefeweizen. Okay, and they have one? They do. Never seen it. I haven't seen... I haven't had a Hefe in a while, dude. I dude, used to love them. That's what I got into when... Mm. Like 2014, when I was first getting into craft beer, mm-hmm. now, I drank a lot of Hefeweizens. Now, I will say, though, that Sierra Nevada can afford to do a makeover with their artwork. Okay, well, they are staying very traditional. They are. Too traditional. Is it? Yeah, that label with that scroll that's like scrolling in every different direction. <laughs> have no it's idea what's going on. Not, it's, it's, it's not a scroll. That's the thing. It makes me wonder, is there different... No, it's the Sierra Nevada Mountains. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I'm surprised that I didn't put two and two together that they were from California since California is where the Sierra Nevada Mountains are. Right. I didn't think about it until yeah, just I didn't now, either. Yeah. So. No, but I was thinking at first, I was thinking, I wonder if they have different pictures in the background because nope. like, this one right here has like some mountains. I wonder if there's different mountains. This one's got... Man, it makes you want to go camping though. This one reminds me of like the desert because of the colors... <laughs> Well, California is a desert too. Even That's though it's true. mountainous, it is a desert. That's true. It's just crazy because they have the ocean and the beautiful coast. Yeah. But then they also have it is like when you think about uh like Las Vegas, you think of desert land. Yeah. And a lot of mountainous areas are deserts as well. Right. By definition, it's just we think of a desert as Las Vegas. Yeah, and not the, always as the beautiful mountain uh, desert. See, I think of uh, not just Las Vegas. I think I think of Arizona. Arizona, but yes. like they've got you know they've got some really crazy mountains in California. I want to go to Northern California, go to like the Yosemite. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to go up there. Me too, man. I want to go to Yosemite so bad. I was gonna do a road trip and drive there, but we ended up flying instead when my sister lived up in Washington. Oh yeah, because we were gonna go through and visit Yosemite, and but it was cheaper to fly. I was going to say, I would have taken forever. <laughs> yeah. Because we were going to rent a car, so that's why it was oh, cheaper. Oh, yeah. I didn't have a reliable car at the time. I've so. <laughs> been there too many yeah. times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Too yep. many times have I been in that position. <laughs> but, All right. So getting let's back to this, we need to kind of stay on track here. So let's rate this one here. Um, I like this one a lot, honestly. I'm thinking like a 3.75, maybe a 4 even. I'm going to say 3.75. <sighs> I'm thinking... I'm on the same page with you. I'm like, un- un- unless you say four, I'm gonna I'll say, say three point seven five. Three point seven five. That sounds perfect. This seems like a good beer too. For wink, wink, we were talking about for people who might not be into craft beer. This might yes. be a good one to set aside. We might need to because, because I think it's got. So this one here is it's got a very good like fruit flavor, like the mm-hmm. peach, or in this case, the nectarine comes through pretty well. But you can still taste those hops. Yeah. Like, it's like a pale ale with some fruit in it. Yeah. Which, to be honest, I don't know if I've I've ever had that. Nope. Usually, it's fruit and no hops. This has both, which is great. Man, their pale ale is one of my favorites. 
Dude, it's it up is. there. And you can I, get it anywhere. But the thing is, I think all pale ales from here are up there. Yeah, but theirs is like the original. So yeah, it's good, man. I really enjoy Sierra 3. Nevada. Three point seven five. Yes. All right, man. So you were gonna tell us about some movies this week. What's up? Yep. All right. So a new thing we're gonna start doing, and it's gonna be called Larry's Pick It or Skip It. So we're gonna look at the movies that I've watched in January, if I can find my list here. Uh, and I might have watched some other movies besides these, but these are the ones that I could remember. So I'm gonna <laughs> go ahead and throw them out there. We're gonna start with the first one that I went with the movies and saw with my kids, The Crudes: A New Age. Did you watch the first Crudes? I watched the uh, first one. I have not seen the uh, the uh, new one yet. What were your thoughts on the first one? It was cute. I didn't mind it. Yeah. I thought I was all right. Yeah. I mean, it's, I wouldn't say it's great because I think a great cartoon. I'm, you want that emotional I'm not pull. Tr- I, you're right. And yeah, I was yeah. going to say, I'm not trying to say that Disney does it the best, but they do it the best. They do it the best. And it's because it gets me, they get me emotionally invested. They do. And Cruise was good. Like, don't get me wrong. It was fun, but it didn't get me emotionally invested. So I wouldn't say it was great, but it was good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. I felt the same way. The Cruise, the first one, I was surprised that I liked it, but I think I liked it more or less because it was funny. Yeah. I and mean, it, it was, was it was humor. just a fun film. Yeah. It was fun. It was funny. Yeah. Well, everything I liked about the first one, I like even more about the second one. Okay. They really topped it. And it it had me laughing the whole time. Okay. In the theater, I was laughing the whole time. So this one's going to be a picket. All right. Check so, it out. Crude's New Age. So according to IMDb, they give it a 7.0 out of 10. Mm. So I think, I know you're going to say picket, but a part of me says you need to rank these one to ten, like IMDb does. Ooh, uh, what? No, I, I prefer Rotten Tomatoes style, though. The Rotten percentage. Tomatoes. Yeah, you don't ever do Rotten Tomatoes. That's what I prefer. Uh, they have the percentage of up to a hundred percent. So and then that. let's do this. Let's get rid of IMDb. Then my bad, my bad. We'll use Rotten Tomatoes. We'll and go then back they to have it. the critics and they have the fans. So you're one hundred percent right because we use Rotten Tomatoes when it comes to plot or not. So we need to use this for what? What, what, what are you calling it? Pick it or stick it? What's it called? Uh, <laughs> pick it or skip it. Pick it or skip it. Larry's right, pick it, picks or skips. Yeah, one or the other. We'll figure it out. We'll work through it. No, nah, I like that. I just it's uh, new, and you the one that took it took a hold of this one. So all right. So before I'm you look saying at this, let's though, pick it. Pick it. Which in a pick it scenario, does that mean it's above fifty percent, or what are you saying here? Well, I don't know. That's that's a hard thing to say. I, if I'm because I feel like sometimes there's a really low rated movie when it comes to not being a good movie, but I'd say you might get a picket from me if you need to watch it. Okay, so a this picket is, a... is just me saying go watch it. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, what, I'm, <laughs> you're you're teaching me some things here. So we're gonna do. So yeah. I want you to do two things here. Okay, picket means you need to go watch it. That doesn't mean it's gonna be a good movie. That just means you need to go watch this movie. Yep. Okay, and then. You want to do Rotten Tomato style, and you want to give it a percentage. I want to give this one an eighty-five percent, which is high for a kids' movie. Look at that! Od- look at that audience score at ninety-four. Ninety-four. Now, what's this tomato meter mean? That's like what's, for what's the, the critics. Uh, the critics are really looking for something that oh, has so, virtue signaling. Oh, so the tomato meter is the is the critics. Yeah, you see how okay. to- uh, tomato meter is one hundred and thirty uh, from the critics. Cool, that, that, then, that's all I need to know. And then you can see seventeen hundred as opposed to one hundred thirty yep. people. Right no, now. I get it. So it's critics versus audience. Cool. And sometimes when they're at the same pace, like when you see a critic and an audience right at the same place, you know it's going to be a good movie. If you see the critics giving something super high, the fans give it really low. That's just because there's a lot of virtue signaling. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Watch them. Look at every time that there's that off balance. It's because they just push an agenda that and the critics are like yes applaud for this uh if the fans love it and the critics hate it it's the opposite it's like it, it's hitting it maybe good but it may be bad it's hitting too much of a niche market and that niche market is in there loving it but then the critics are like well that's not for us yeah so that's the way i kind of look at so it so it sounds like if they're similar to each other like this is this is close yeah, enough yeah, in my opinion close, yeah that you should go watch it Oh, if the mm-hmm. numbers are too skewed, even if it's one way or the other, it's hit or miss. And I always use my discernment beforehand to say, what do I think about it? And then I use these numbers to kind of validate my thoughts. Okay. So I already kind of grow some assumptions. Right, right. Sometimes I think a movie's going to be good, and then as soon as I come on here and I see the the ratings are really low, I'm like, oh, man, they 
screwed it up. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. That all was right, the first man. one. What, what else you got? All right. And, uh, so the next one we're going to go with is an older movie, but I just recently watched it called gifted gifted. Okay. Gifted with, I think it has, yeah, Chris Evans in it. So this movie, I had no idea what it was about, but I took forever to watch it. It's going to be a picket. Watch a picket. this one. And this would be a good one to watch uh, if you are if you want something to pull at your heartstrings. Shut up, Siri. Uh, <laughs> if you want something to pull at your heartstrings, uh, maybe something to watch with your family. I can't remember the content on it, but it seems like something you could watch with your kids. Okay. It'd be really good to watch with them. It's got some good values. This one, not only am I going to pick it, I'm going to go in the 80s on this one as well. So the I'll, 80s do as well. I'll do an 85. Oh, look, same thing, fans. Audience score gives it an 85. Right. Tomato meter a 73. Now, one other question, since you're more familiar with uh, with tomato or with Rotten Tomatoes, they do uh, they do a thing. I've, I've heard it called Certified Rotten. Yeah. That, mean, that means it's terrible, I'm assuming. Well, it's certified if it, it, it has X number of viewers for X amount of time. Okay. So it has to have a minimum limit of people who rated it, and then it has to stay in the rotten section for a certain amount of time, and then it becomes certified. Okay. Because cool. because a year, you know, ten years later, all of a sudden it can be like a cult classic, and then everybody goes on there and then sways the votes. Yeah. But it's like no, it was already certified. So certified rotten means it's good. Uh, no, rotten's bad. Certified fresh. Oh, is it called certified fresh? Yes, I'm yes. like, I think there's a cert certification. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's a, good. Certified fresh. Certified fresh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. What 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 else you got there? Next, we're gonna go with another animated movie called Wolf Walkers. This one is brought to you by uh, man. These people always make they make really good animated movies that are artistic. Uh, have you ever seen Song of the Sea? Never even heard of it. Oh, dude, Song of the Sea was so good. What they do, though, is they build their movies based on uh, folklores. Okay, cool. Okay. So they're always based on some kind of folklore from some kind of culture. So Song of the Sea is, I don't remember what culture it is. If it's like some kind of like, uh, some kind of European culture, though, right? Okay. Like Celtic uh, or something? A lot of them are Celtic. Yeah, it, that one is actually Celtic. Is it? Okay. Uh, Good And guess. then this one is... Uh, Yep, you can see it's another Celtic one. They have one that's uh, an Indian one, though. Oh, cool. That takes place in, like, Pakistan or something. It's super good, man. All of them are really good. Uh, they're also, like, very artistic in the way that they tell the story through their visuals. And it's not, like, just trying to, like, slap a bunch of colors at you. And, you know, kind of like the Crudes. It's, like, slap a bunch of stuff in your face and then get you excited oh, okay. and get your adrenaline pumping. It's really an artistic, emotional experience. All their movies are. Okay. Uh, I love all of them. This one uh, I like, I loved as well. And I'm going to go with the 80% on this one and say you need, it's a picket. A lot of good movies I watched this month. I was going to say, did you watch anything terrible? Look, 100%. But only, it's only 42. 42. It's not near as popular as the other ones. There's not that many people watch it. It's a new one. Uh, it's an Apple TV exclusive, though. Yeah, Apple Original says, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then look at the... I mean, the critics gave it 149 at a ninety nine percent, so they're all loving it. Yep, everybody's a lot liking it. And, it's a good you, and you gave it an eighty. Yeah, I fell asleep during it though. So that's <laughs> not problem. I fell asleep. My wife told me how it ended. <laughs> okay, it was good though. Uh, like what I saw was good. I'd, I'd probably go higher. I don't. Maybe I shouldn't rate these. Look up "Song of the Sea" real quick though, man. Just see what that one got. That one is a is a movie that our me and my girls have loved forever. The songs are beautiful. 2014, man, we've been watching this for a while. Look at that. See how the the critics and the fans are equal. Yeah, that means it's, a, it's the close. hitter, bro. Yeah, twelve thousand. Yeah, but it's another folklore. Oh, look, there, there you go. Certified fresh. Certified, man. <laughs> All right, what what else you got this month? Okay, this next one's a special one for you, dude. It's called Sound of Metal. Really? Sound of Metal, dude. You'll love this one. If you don't go away and watch this one right away, uh, there's something wrong with you. Okay. I have this one if you want me to put it. Well, I don't know if you have a flight. You have your computer there. I can put it on your computer for you before you leave. Okay. Uh, but this one's really good. All right. We're trying to pull it up here. Uh, uh, what, anyway, what, 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 what's it about? All right. So it's about a drummer. It's about a guy who him and his girlfriend are in a band. 
Mm-hmm. It's a two-piece band, and they're a metal band. That's why I said you'll love it, because you're all in the metal music. I like some metal. He's a drummer. All of a sudden, he can't hear anymore. He's going oh, deaf. what? Yeah. Overnight, he just starts going deaf. So, he has to start dealing with this. Not to mention him and his girlfriend are recovering like addicts, and they're on the road, and they live in an RV. He can't drum anymore. So... He goes off to this basically like a place for people who are going deaf. And he just wants to get his ears fixed because he's like, I just need to get this fixed. I need to drum some more. Yeah. And they're like, what we do here is we help you deal with dealing with the fact that you're not going to hear anymore. Uh, How are you going to live life from this point on? But he's refusing to accept it. Dude, I'm not getting sad listening to you. Dude, it's (laughs) good, man. You need to watch it. You need to watch it. You know, I watched this tonight. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, and, the, and the music is so awful that I think you'll love it. Uh-huh. <laughs> me, and, me and Charity were laughing at how awful their band was. Even oh, his really? drumming was just like, just like. And, it, and this is what's great but about it, it. But it sounds like even though they're awful, they're very passionate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're very passionate. And that's what I can get behind. They're into their artwork. Yeah. And the movie plays it from his perspective. So a lot of times you hear the way he's hearing. Oh. So he's drumming, and then all of a sudden it'll switch to his ears, and you hear like the minimum drum. I don't want to give away too much, but a lot of it it puts you in his shoes of Bro. what what he's dealing with, even as a person who's an ex addict and who uses music to cope, and now he lost that thing that he used. Yeah. Good man, like bro, you you sold me. <laughs> you sold me. This one's a hitter. Uh, I'm gonna give this one a ninety percent. A ninety yeah, percent. I bet the fans. And it's uh, it's a it's a picket. Yeah, it's a picket. Look. Boom. Audience 96, 90%, 90. 96. And this what one's up? on Prime Video, actually. Go check it out on Prime Video. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure will. Dang, I gotta check this one out. This one sounds good. Came already. out December 4th, man. Dang. I waited for this one to come out for a while. Dang. I don't watch that that many movies nowadays. When I was when I was younger, like when I was in high school, even fresh out of high school, I watched a lot of movies all the time. Nowadays, yeah. I just don't watch that many movies. I might have cheated. I might have watched this one in December, actually. Because oh, uh, really? I was thinking about, I want to keep it like the movies I watched in January now that I saw when it came out. But either way, it's, either I, way, I slipped it I'm in for you. you. I'm glad you. I slipped it in for you, dude. Thanks, man. I appreciate that, bro. <laughs> all right. What else you got? All right. We got two more. I'm going to make them. I'll keep them as quick as possible. Cool. Uh, the next one I told you a little bit about, News of the World. I watched this one just last Saturday. I um, act- is it that this that new one with uh, Tom Hanks? Yep, Tom Hanks. It's a period piece that takes place in the wicked wild west, and it takes place right here in North Texas, which is awesome because you get to see what it was like here in Texas, right? And just a crazy time of life. Uh, super good movie. I don't want to give away too much of it, but what I'd say is it's definitely a picket. And uh, it's a really good acting. It's really good writing. Uh, I'm gonna go. Oh, I watched this one with my um, with Coraline, okay, who's nine. So she wanted to watch it. She's like, she, we were gonna watch a movie in the middle of the day. We normally don't watch movies in the middle of the day, right? And she's like, can I watch it? So we looked up the content and stuff, and we're like, all right, let's do it. Uh, but she was glued to it, man, and she really enjoyed it. Okay, so it was good. There you go. Uh, so, so it's not like it's not another picket. Another picket, dude. I'm keeping the 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 passing one for the last. Okay. There's a lot of good ones. Okay. Uh, and there was really two movies that I hated this month, but I couldn't even remember the other one. <laughs> it was so bad. Okay. So let's see what the the fans and the critics gave it. Yeah, look at that. Even. 89, 88. All right. I said 90. 90. Okay. So. There you go. All right. What 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 else you got? You you said you had you had yep. one more. Last but not least, one that I think everyone in America was was looking forward to. Wonder Woman 84. Oh, my gosh. So, I'm going to tell you this. I haven't even seen it. I'm not a big fan of, like, I almost said Marvel, but superhero movies in general. I'm just, they're okay. To me, it's a lot of mindless action. The storylines are never really that good. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, I'm just, I never really get into it. I don't follow anybody on social media outside of like some a few friends and like MMA outlets. I yep. use so, so social media 90% for MMA news. And I saw so many MMA reporters Trashing saying it. how terrible this movie was. I had no idea. 
I watched it the day it came Luke out. Luke Thomas said it was one of the worst films he's ever seen. I saw it the day it came out because this is one they on the new HBO Max where they release it to digital the same day it's in theaters. Oh, cool. So I watched it the day it came out. Had no idea that it was going to be garbage. <laughs> now, I don't, I'm not a fan of DC. DC movies suck. The comics I'm not a big fan of. Really? really? All their movies okay, I'm not so- a big fan of. I've I've heard that about the movies, but I've heard that they did a really good job on the TV shows. I know uh, I haven't watched all of it. I've seen I saw a lot of it when I was married. I saw a lot of Arrow. Arrow was fun. I watched I watched part of the first season of Arrow. I watched part of the first season of Gotham. I heard that Gotham nah. was fun. I heard that the I Flash can't. was good. I heard that Daredevil's awesome. Daredevil's Marvel. And Daredevil is awesome. Okay, well, I'm just, I don't know, <laughs> a part of me thinks like really dark stuff is DC. No, well, it seems that way. So Marvel rocks i love everything <laughs> marvel there are some exclusive in, 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 in uh, not exclusives but uh exclusions exclusions thank you yeah there are some exclusions now the first wonder woman movie though made me think okay dc did something good here i enjoyed it it was fun it was i'm not really usually big into these like huge woman power type movies but they did a good job at it and i enjoyed it okay so i was looking forward to this one to come out for a while i i love the 80s theme anything but this movie sucks so bad. <laughs> Everything that could have went wrong with it went wrong, and it was weird. There's so many weird things, man. Ugh, like, so, was it the storyline? Was it like the storyline the... was weird? The antagonist was weird. His ability, I, 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 I didn't even know if he was evil half the time or if he was just a weird guy. And I think my conclusion is he's just a really weird guy. <laughs> he's not even evil. He's <laughs> yeah, just weird I'm just and nerdy. Like, and then, like, you know. I don't even want to give away too much of the plot for people, but there's just weird things that happen in it. And okay. the whole thing just sucked, man. Fell flat. So skip this one. So super I bad give this flop. one a, a 15%. 15. 74 from the audience? You guys are, what are you, smoking peyote? <laughs> it makes me wonder, dude. It makes me wonder how, like, we we need to log into this. We, we need to create an account and we need to start rating these things whenever yeah. we do this each month because it makes me wonder if people are like, I'm just a fan of w- movies that have a woman as a lead role. Yeah, well, that Or one. I'm a fan <laughs> of DC in general, so I'm going to give it a higher score. It's it's it, it's like earlier. Yeah. Bow's Point got a three. Did it deserve a three? Uh-huh. Maybe not. Yeah, <laughs> no, because of it being the 25th anniversary, we gave Bell's point. Of no, I, I agree. So I, I wonder if there's things that sway yeah. the audience, even the even the critics, to give it just a little bit of a higher score. You're right. The critics were swayed with the virtue signaling of woman power. The fans were swayed. Which we're not saying anything wrong with women, but come no, on. definitely not. But that's just something that people virtue signal about. Right. Yeah, right. is like the whole like uh, women women power, like literally. Yeah. So like, if it has any kind of theme like that, they're like, yeah, we'll stand behind that because that's the right thing to do, right? That's what I mean by virtue yep. signaling. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I get it. Audience, though, I think I think a lot of dumb people, like not dumb people, people watch dumb things and they like it. I used to work at the movie theater and I was blown away by the stupid movies that people would go. That see. would be sold out, like yeah, it was sold out, or just that people would like. I'm like, you like this thing? <laughs> so people, because you watched it, a lot of movies, <laughs> yeah. And DC sucks, man. Any DC movie is awful and does not deserve a seventy percent. I can't think of a I single one. Th- any. Maybe some of the Batmans, but remember when I rewatched them last year and I said, dude, they sucked. I was disappointed with all of them. Like, I need to go back and watch them again. The Christopher but Nolan ones. The I Christopher thought, Nolan ones, I enjoyed. I thought they were good, but I rewatched them and I'm like, second thought, they're not that good. Like, I enjoyed them in, in the moment. I thought their storyline was better. I liked the darkness of it. it I don't think, I didn't think it was mindless action. Yeah. Like, what, because I've seen, now granted, I haven't seen all of the Marvel movies by any means, but I've seen a good amount of them to go, they're all pretty much the same. Don't you speak that. Don't you speak that. Marvel movies are not the same. They are legit. <laughs> I love all the Marvel movies. But I think the reason why you like it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's because it's nostalgic. It reminds you of when you were a kid reading the comics. Well, I love so my, some of my favorite comics, though, are X-Men, but Sony screws it up. All of the X-Men movies suck. 
Just like all of the Sony Spider-Man movies suck, and Spider-Man were my favorite comics. Just like the Sony Daredevil movie sucked. So, but I'll, the Netflix I'll have one's to, great. So we're gonna get into a little bit of debate, and then we'll wrap this one up, okay? So I'll say the first three X-Men, you're right. This they were not that good. The first two I liked at, at X3 at first. was awful. At first, X3 was crap. Was garbage. Oh, the rest of them, dude. Even New Mutants came out last so, year. Awful. Uh, I, I didn't see it. I saw the first one when they were kids. What was it called? First Class. First Class. I thought it was... I didn't think it was bad. I, at first, I didn't think it was that bad either. I thought that they did a pretty good job. Now, granted, yeah. I didn't see the the Days of Future Past. That one sucked. I mean, there's a reason why I didn't see it. The Apocalypse one sucked. Didn't see Apocalypse. And I liked some Mutants. of the actors. I thought some of the <laughs> actors did a really good job in their roles. Yeah, yeah. But it makes me think that the storylines were just bad. Like, the character writing was just bad. It had nothing to do. The writing. Yeah. It's the writing, dude, and it's the studio. I don't think it's the actors at all. They brought in a team for now, actors, for sure. Now, when you talk about uh, Spider-Man, and it comes to the, the Sony movies, yeah. it's basically everything up to Coming Home, right? Or Homecoming? Uh, Yeah, or, or Civil is, or War. Or is Homecoming still considered... No, Sony. Homecoming is uh, Marvel. It's, okay. it's, it's, a, it's a collaboration, but they allowed the... Uh, What's his name? The guy who runs Josh Whedon, not Josh not Whedon, the director, the but the producer, the guy who's in control of all the story writing for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Oh, okay, uh, I don't remember his name, but he do, he writes all the stories. He comes up with all the plots. He writes out the timelines. It's not. Uh, I can't remember. I feel like it starts with an F. You're right. But, Hold on, I know his name. He's he's the lead character in the movie Chef. No, that he's a director. And he directed, he like, directed he like directed a lot like of Iron them. Man. He directed Iron Man, yeah. yeah. And some of it he directed. I want to uh, say his name starts with F two. Yeah, that's John Farver. Favre. Favreau. Favreau. Yeah. Yeah. He's good, but no, I, I don't remember. In, in, anyway. Anyways, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I, I'll say this. Now I haven't seen Homecoming, so I am, I'm out of it a little bit because I haven't seen it, so I really can't speak on that. But I thought Andrew Garfield did a good job. I, I thought I the one Andrew that Garfield's. he did in the first one, what was it? Yeah, uh, you're right. Whatever the first one was that, that he did. The Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, I thought it was great. I thought it was... Now, Tobey Maguire is OG. Like, S S Spider-Man, the first one was good. That was really the only good one. It was and good when I was a kid. It, I was going to yeah. say, I haven't seen it since I was a kid, so <laughs> yeah, I can't yeah. say about it, it now. It was good then, but no. But anymore. I even look at the Andrew Garfield one, and I say, they did Spider-Man right. Yeah, I liked it. that... He he acted like a kid. They put comedy uh -huh. into it, which I thought was awesome, and that's the reason why I liked the. Uh, maybe it's called the Amazing Spider-Man. It the, was the Amazing Spider-Man. No, I'm thinking of. No, I was gonna say like they did a cartoon. I want to say it was on Disney, and it may have been called the Amazing Spider-Man too. The Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh, whatever one what, what, what it was, it was. I thought it was awesome. I thought the cartoon was great. The old one from the '90s was the Amazing Spider-Man. The newer one from Disney's Ultimate Spider-Man that that I like. Is it is it Ultimate Sp yeah, Spider-Man? Yeah, yeah. I only know because I, when I was a kid, I loved the Ultimate Spider-Man. I loved all the Ultimate Universe. And so. it was, uh, but it, but but it was kind of funny and silly, and he acted like a kid. Yes, it is the Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. This TV show was great, and I yeah. thought that the Amazing Spider-Man and Kirk, am, am, am I am I saying that right? I sound like an idiot. But with Andrew Garfield, was it yeah, the Yeah, that's the amazing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was as close to the ultimate Spider-Man that they could do. And I thought it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, you're right. You're right. Whenever I say that Sony sucks, the, that was an exception. Oh, I okay. enjoyed okay. that. I enjoyed the amazing Spider-Man movies. Now, the second one with uh, Electro or whatever it was. Yeah, yeah no thanks. That but. one, dude. I, what's weird is I only saw it once and I saw a bootleg cam version. <laughs> And that movie, some guy holding it like this. In the that back. movie, that's not the kind of movie you watch a cam for because it's so dark and there's so much electricity and stuff going on. I had no idea what. Everything happened. was blasted out white. I had no idea what happened half the time. I'm actually thinking I'm gonna go back and rewatch that one. Okay, I just know that Jamie Foxx was Electro, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. And I remember Charity went to the movie theater and watched it with a friend, and I was jealous. I'm like, <laughs> oh, dude, I really want to see it. So instead, I just bootlegged a cam. <laughs> <laughs> I downloaded a cam of it, and I never watch cams. Bro, I think those are so stupid. It's to watch. like you were in the theater with her. You were just eye level at her hips. Yeah, I, <laughs> I just had barely, something over my eyes, like barely plastic. peering over the, the yeah. seat in front of you. It was just shaking, and 
<laughs> yeah. Oh man. Well, okay. So, hey, everybody, look forward to each month. Larry's gonna do Larry's picks. What, what, what are you calling it? It's Larry's um, picks. It's either start it or stop it. What's it's it either pick it or skip it. Pick it or skip it. We're gonna. I'm. I'm gonna get that down eventually. Yep. So Larry's picks. It's pick it or skip it. We're gonna do this each each month. We're gonna do it for movies. We might actually do it for some extra stuff. It just depends on what happens. But yeah. Larry will show his picks. So get ready for this each month. I appreciate you guys tuning in like you do each and every week. Make sure to follow us online at uh, Instagram and on tap to underscore dudes and brews. But we're out of here. Peace. We appreciate you guys tuning in for another episode of Dudes and Brews. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, whatever platform you're on. We're on there. We have a YouTube channel, Dudes and Brews. We would love if you would subscribe there as well. If you are subscribed and you want to help us out just a little more, unsubscribe and resubscribe again. It sounds funny and stupid and kind of obnoxious, all of the subscribing and resubscribing and stuff, but it helps within these little algorithms games to for like climbing the charts because, again, we are organic and we are where we are because of you guys. Yeah, we really do appreciate your support. Shout us out. We really do love it when you guys interact with us, when you add us, mention us. Put us on your stories, tag us, all that fun stuff, all the stuff the kids are doing. We like grabbing that stuff, and we put it up for you guys. So we love, appreciate you so much. Keep having fun, drinking them brews, hanging with them dudes. Tune in next week for another episode of Dudes and Brews.